So I'm a Parkinson's doc. I've been a Parkinson's doctor for about 20 years. I've been really interested in looking at what makes uh, patients have better quality of life and reduce symptoms. Um, I have been Western trained as a movement disorder neurologist, but also have this background in integrative medicine and uh, have been interested in yoga and mindfulness as applications possibly to help our patients. I mean, going to those conferences about integrative medicine, I learned about these social determinants of health that were really unknown to me from medical school. And uh, I was really fascinated by the concept of loneliness and social isolation. Um, we ended up having um, this uh, web survey that we administer to patients. There's about 2,000 patients involved in our study and about 1,800 of them or so are Parkinson's patients. And we have a whole host of um, questions that we ask them about things that they can modify that might have something to do with how their quality of life is. Um, and so things like exercise, diet, um, and we started looking at some of these other determinants as well, such as loneliness and social isolation by asking specific questions like, are you lonely? Do you have a lot of friends? Things like that. And what we, when we looked at the data, um, we, I initially was really excited about yoga and its effects, but we ended up looking at the loneliness um, indicators and saw that loneliness is actually a hugely um, bad prognostic indicator for Parkinson's patients. And it's as bad for you to be lonely with Parkinson's as the beneficial effects of exercising seven days a week for 30 minutes a day is good for you. So it's a really huge um, determinant of uh, wellness in this population. And I think it's uh, all the more important to care about this um, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, our research was conducted before the pandemic and we have um, a survey that goes out every six months. And so we'll see how this cohort is doing moving forward. And we've added some additional questions around um, loneliness and ways to measure it. But I think it'll be really um, important for us as a medical community to care about our patients, um, no matter what the disease state is. Um, there's actually data looking at aging populations and uh, the data suggests that it's as bad for you to be uh, lonely as, as if you smoked a half a pack of cigarettes every day or if you were obese. So this is a huge determinant of health just in general populations and in Parkinson's patients specifically, I think it's really a big sort of um, red flag if somebody's lonely and isolated. So I ended up doing a yoga teacher training, did a lot of mindfulness training actually at the VA where I run a center of excellence. And um, I've just uh, you know been drinking it all in. I think it's really important to think about disease um, and health in a very um, different way. I think, you know, the, the, even the World Health Organization talks about disease as not just the absence of illness, but actually, you know, sort of this holistic model of, you know, true mental, spiritual, you know, physical well-being. And the VA has actually been quite cutting edge in that regard. They have this um, program called the Whole Health Program, where the patient's kind of in the middle, and then all the things that make a difference for a patient's um, health are around it. So things like what they would eat, the people who are in their lives, you know, all these different factors. And so the sort of sense is that you're not just taking care of, you know, Mr. Smith with a tremor today, um, you know, who comes in on this pill, but really thinking about, you know, Mr. Smith and where he lives and all the people that, you know, impact him and can he actually get um you know to get green vegetables if i prescribe that to him or can you know um, mrs smith sign into the online yoga program that i'm asking them to do you know because they don't have you know internet there or they they are not savvy enough you know so i think we have to think about these our patients in a very different way. And I think that the COVID-19 um, pandemic has really made us think outside the box. We're used to seeing a patient in our office with my white coat and the patient sitting in that chair and me typing. Now I'm seeing them, you know, like this with, um, you know, seeing what's in the background. I've really been um, so interested in, you know, the, the sort of stuff that's in my patient's homes or, you know, what's down the street, um, you know, for them to access and all the things that make them healthy and well. So it's, it's really, I think, made me pause and think about what really matters. And um, I think it's a important time for a lot of these things to be highlighted. And I think uh, people are becoming more open-minded to the concept of health as, you know, this sort of holistic kind of approach um, and, and thinking about the determinants of health in a very different way, including, you know, um, we see that, you know, race and ethnicity matter so much, you know, to 
who's who's dying from COVID. We see that you know um, something that impacts you know somebody across the world can impact me. You know, like a virus can spread, or you know, we can impact each other. And so I think it's just such a differently connected way of thinking about health these days that that is um, quite profound as a as a pivot uh, of, of change. So I think I'm excited to see what the future holds. But I, I think we have an opportunity to really think outside that box and intervene in ways that we may never have done before. And you mentioned the word, um, you know, how to ask about loneliness. Um, one of the things that I've been really interested in is the fact that I've never actually asked about that in a way. Um, you know, if somebody comes into my office with a wife and they seem to be getting along, I just assume that this man is not lonely. But from my reading and, and learning about this, um, there was a, a lot of interesting things that were revealed to me. Like um, you actually, in order to be um, not lonely, it's important for you to have quality relationships in three spheres. One is the intimate sort of sphere of maybe being, um, you know, connected to a partner or, or a spouse. The second is relation is the sort of relational loneliness of having um, people that are in your um, friend circle um, that care about you that you can confide in. And the third is actually that you've, you're connected um, to a collective group um, in society that has a purpose that you have. So for my veterans, I might be being a veteran. For my Parkinson's patients, it might be, you know, joining a support group. And so these things each actually have to be quite fulfilled for people to not feel lonely. And so, you know, I think we have to ask patients in a different way. We have to say, how are you doing? You know, are you lonely? Do you have people in these three spheres? And I think it's quite powerful to care about this, um, you know, in a very different way than we may have done in the past.